Well, this is the uh, Lowe Family Cemetery. And there's a few stones down here. I don't know whether uh, I don't know whether any of these are engraved or whether we just got uh, some stones. You got any engraving at all there? Not that I can see. Yeah, me either. There's several of them sticking up. There's one there, and there's another. And we got okay. There's a, there is a marker down here. This one's engraved. Yeah. Rosalie Phillips, 2016. And then this one is uh, got some markings on it, but it's awfully hard to make out. And we've got some lilies planted there. And there's another over there. Interesting. And then there's another marker back up there. That make it, I don't know whether that's a headphones, headstone footstone combo or whether that's two different graves or what that is. That's interesting. We've got a nice little bug right here too. A little moth. Kind of hanging out on the leaves there. Looks like a stealth bummer. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. You wonder, I do, maybe you don't. It'd be interesting to know, you know, did they bring a casket and everything up here or is this an ashes? Is this where ashes are spread? This one's uh, new enough that they would, could have done cremation, but I'm, I'm guessing that most of these are probably, probably not that old, or probably older than that. So, yeah, I don't know how you would get uh, get the funeral procession up here, but that's really I interesting. Not too far from the road. Well, that's true. We know that the we know the Shenandoah, what you would call it, National, National Park. Park or the uh, Skyline Drive, and the Parkway are close by. Yeah, interesting. Well, we got us a deer up here. A little bit less threatening than the bear from yesterday. It's kind of a stare down right now. I probably can't see much of anything in this view. Let's see what we got here. That tree's really right in the way, isn't it? Can't really see it very well myself. But we got a deer up here. up there. Oh me. I'm moving my phone all over the place. Well. Yep, he's had enough of us. Yep. All right, moving on up the trail now. Well, this is the uh, foundation of an old house, W.J. Mayo home place, and uh, his chimney still stands. Can we get a, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Yep, so this is kind of neat. We knew this was coming. Wow, this is a, look how small this house is. I know, it's like a tiny house. Because the, the foundation is only, what, 10 feet square? Maybe. There's, There's two, two trekking poles. Two. And then there'd be three to the corner. So that's 375 centimeters. Three, three of my trekking poles. So three meters, that's 10 feet. A little over 10 feet square. Wow, that's pretty pretty incredible. But uh, I guess at that point in time, you didn't accumulate all the stuff that you, that we accumulate today, and you didn't have a need for anything that wasn't functional. So it's kind of like backpacking. You you get what you need, and that's all you've got, and uh, that's all you do need. So. Yeah. One foot. That's true. Two. That's true. That's true. That his house is bigger than ours. Ours is. Uh, like seven and a half feet by three feet. So it's pretty cool. Well, the Appalachian River again. Actually, this one's going across the trail, not uh, down the trail, thankfully. But uh, we're going to see, I'm sure, quite a few streams today as we go up the trail. Just still from the rain a few days ago. I'm hoping we have one more stream. Yeah, we should have several, I think. But. Uh, hey, well, this Okay, so a wall listed too. I still think there's going to be some that we uh, come across that are not in the guidebooks just because of the rain that we had. I hope so. Because it rained again last night a little bit after we got settled. According to one of the guys in the shelter, it rained pretty hard for a while. 
I heard it start, but I didn't last long. So, ooh, there's a big blowdown. Now that's a cat haul right there. That's not just, it just amazes me. These big trees that blow down, and I guess they're just sitting on top of the rocks and just don't ever have the root structure to hold them up. But uh, it's been interesting to see the big blowdowns because you just don't imagine humongous trees falling in the forest for no good reason. Well, mountain stream. This one may be the mountain stream of the day, but at the very least, we're going to see how we get across this thing. Hope not. This is a family friendly video, no falling. If you do fall, mind your tongue. She's got it. She's got it. And I'm not even worried about bullfrog. He and I have got longer legs. So we go across much easier because we've got more reach. Yeah, that's true. Bullfrog has waterproof shoes. Yep, yeah, Angel doesn't. Neither does Gavin, neither does Rob or Waffle or whatever I'm called these days. Yeah, there you go. That's true. All right, on up the trail. It's been a beautiful day today. Not too hot. The sun's out. I was really concerned about the humidity today, but it's really not been too terribly bad. Knock on wood. Well, we're off the trail just a touch. Headed for the Rockfish Gap Visitor Center. We're going to sit down here. Hopefully there's some picnic tables. I think there are. Have a little bit of lunch. Hope there's some water in there because we've passed our last stream before we get to the shelter. Let's see if we can find some water. A little bit of rest for a few minutes. And then we'll be back on the trail. We've got an interstate down here. 64 maybe, I can't remember now the number. But, uh, nice view off the top up here. Kind of a big climb up here though. But uh, we're here. So we're going to sit down and rest a little bit. Well, here's Bullfrog filling out our permit for the uh, Shenandoah National Park. We've got seven easy steps to complete the form. Fill it in, put in the dates, enter the trailhead locations you were parking a vehicle. We don't have any stinking vehicle. Uh, I think we can figure this out. Maybe. Maybe. And there's bears in this area, apparently. <laughs> and we've always heard that the Shenandoahs are where you're going to see the most bears. We'll see how that plays out as we go through, but we'll be going with care. Well, this is our first brush with Skyline Drive. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. I'm not going to turn around. Not going to do it. We've been kind of interested to watch the moon over here rising up over the uh, trees. We've been here for a little while. And our trail's going to be going off this way. We're four miles from our shelter and eagerly, eagerly awaiting being at the shelter. I haven't seen many cars go by. So, uh, oh, no, here comes one. We'll wave at it as it goes by. Wave. Yeah, they didn't see us. Nope, they didn't see us. But we're having us a big day in uh, some ways and some ways not so much, but we're kind of closer to the end of it than we are to the beginning. So it'd be nice to sit down and kick our feet up and relax a little bit when we get to the shelter. And we'll talk to you up the trail. A couple of things yet to see. Well, this is something that you don't very often see on the AT. First time for me to see a propane tank. And uh, this is some sort of uh, communications facility Warning RF frequency radio or radiation hazard. So I guess we won't get too close to that or it might booger up my signal. Thought there were supposed to be some benches right up here, but I'm not seeing them. I'll have to check the guidebook and uh, see what it says. But I thought there were some benches with a nice little view right here. And uh, we'll go on the left up a little ways and see what we see. But uh, anyway, moving on, up, moving on up the road. Maybe they're on the other side of it. We'll, we'll have to look. Well, I just came down through this field right here. Not sure if this is Skyline Drive or not. It probably is. That says, uh, sign over there says Beagle Gap. There's some little porta johns here. I'm good actually for the moment. And we're gonna be following these guys right here up that hill. Oh, that's a giant growth of poison oak right in front of me. If you ever wanted to know what poison oak looks like growing on a fence post, that's it right there, just as big as life. So to be careful with that. But I guess we're going up to the top of this and then we'll ridge line some more. So anyway, I'm gonna hang here for just a few minutes and wait on some folks to catch up and we'll head on out. 
Well, that's where we were. Just a little bit of top, a minute ago, we were on top of Bear Mountain and uh, we kind of come down and down through this field. You can probably see where the trails cut down through there. And uh, of course you see the car and the Portage Johns are right there behind that tree. But uh, yeah, we were just up on top of that. And now we're climbing a little bit, but it looks like it's not gonna be too bad. I think the uh, trail's gonna turn to the right and go down through the woods here. And we're just at two miles from the shelter, so. I'm gonna head on up the road a little bit. Gavin's right behind me back there in the uh, restroom facilities. And we'll meet up here, just, I'm gonna kinda of go up this hill slowly. And I see a double blaze up there, which means that the trail's gonna probably turn to the right. And it'd be cool if it went downhill a little bit. But we'll take whatever we get. Wow, I just looked up. And this deer's standing right beside the trail. I am no more than 15 feet from the deer. That's pretty doggone amazing. Beautiful animal. God's creatures are awesome. I maybe should uh, park my headphones and listen more carefully. I've only got headphones in one ear. I'm not gonna bother you, bud, or lady. Nope, I'm just watching. I'm just watching. I'm filming. You're gonna be on YouTube. You're gonna be internationally famous. Yeah, probably not. I know, that seems ridiculous. You just perked both, up, both ears up at me when I said internationally famous. Yeah, she doesn't believe it either. I've only got 100 subscribers or maybe two. So maybe not internationally famous. But I will say that it's pretty awesome to be standing just about 15 feet from a deer who seems completely un unconcerned with me. And it's also nice to be standing less than two miles from a shelter. And I don't want to scare her, but uh, I do need to go up the trail. Yeah, I need to go up the trail here just a minute, but I'm gonna stand here and watch you for a second and see what you do. Because this is the first good, good view of, a, of an animal that I've gotten just so very, very close. And you're beautiful. Yep, you're beautiful. My son's gonna be coming up the hill here just in a minute. Yep, just shortly. He's gonna be probably making some noise. Probably have a radio on, might wanna scare you a little bit. But uh, hopefully not. Yep. All right, I'm gonna put my phone down and let you go ahead and eat. I'll just stand here and stare at you for a little bit. That doesn't make you nervous. Yeah, because you're more, you're hungry. I'm hungry too. I'm ready to get to my shelter and make some supper. Eat down some of the weight in my food bag. You're lucky, you just kind of wander through the woods and get the food. I have to buy it at the store. And then I have to carry it on my back for miles and miles and miles. And it's heavy when we just come out of town. Yep. Oh boy. All right, you're absolutely gorgeous and I appreciate you being patient and letting me film you here. I'm gonna sign off now. No, that's okay, I'm not gonna bother you. I'm just turning off my phone. Well, I wasn't expecting this. I just stepped out of the woods into this open top up here. I think this is either Calf Mountain or Little Calf Mountain, I'm not sure which. When I checked my phone in the woods, it said I was at the top of Little Calf Mountain, but I don't see this going up any further. Oh, nope, Little Calf Mountain. Summit, right there. And my trail goes to the left, but that's where we've been. There's the uh, radio towers that we saw earlier. And down here's a really nice little uh, rock second. Pretty nice place to camp, except there's no water here. And I'm in a place where I'm down to my last few swallows. So about a mile and two tenths from the top of, or from the shelter. And there's water there. So that's where I'm going. And we'll check in with you just shortly. I guess we go back down into the woods here. This has been a really pleasant hike today. Not really too bad of a terrain. Uh, we have been walking in close grass like this a few times. I don't love that just from the tick standpoint, but I'll check myself over and uh, make sure that I got no buggies on me. And looking forward to getting some supper and some water. We'll talk to you soon. Well, I'm not sure exactly what to make of this big pile of rocks right in the middle of the trail, but uh, Somebody has spent quite a bit of time stacking on top of it anyway. So I thought I'd take a picture of it, let you see it too. Uh, gosh, I just, I don't know why there would be a pile right there. Although there is a survey marker right there. So maybe this is the top of uh, Calf Mountain. It means my shelter is not too terribly far down the road. And uh, we're getting there as quickly as we can. But that's really kind of neat. Uh, people have added to the pile, obviously. I don't think I have the time, talent, or skill to balance rocks like some of these folks do. That pile right there is especially tall. 
kind of cool. I just walked under some poison oak. We've been, uh, for days, weeks, months, walking under branches that are low hanging over the trail. And, uh, and a lot of times I'll look back and say, ooh, was that poison oak? Because poison oak doesn't usually come up that high. And I have really kind of become uh, immune to it, not the poison oak, but just noticing what I'm walking under. But this particular time I stopped and there was a deadish tree with a inch thick branch of poison, ovi, poison ivy running up it and just hanging right down over the trail. Got brushed against my arm a little bit. I'll wash that off with a uh, baby wipe when I get to the campsite here just in a little bit and that should take care of it. But I did text backwards to let Bullfrog and Angel and Gavin know that it was there and I found some uh, branches just beside the trail that uh, kind of propped up against it to push it a little bit out of the trail at least to mark it to where people wouldn't walk through it. So hopefully that wasn't a bad leave no trace practice but I'd rather not get poison oak out here. I don't want to scratch. Anyway I'm headed on towards the shelter. I shouldn't be too terribly far now. I'm pretty confident that, that was the, the top of Calf Mountain. So we're just a few tenths away I think now from the shelter and water and supper and sleep. And I'm looking forward to all of them. We'll talk to you soon. Well, this is the closest I've come to running out of battery. I'm at like 6%, but I'm also close to the shelter and being able to plug up. So I'm gonna stop and take a picture. That's a big tree right there. And there's a twin to it right down here. A couple of really big trees. I'm not sure exactly how far out of the shelter I am, but it's less than, I would say less than half a mile, except I think it's a little bit off the trail. But, uh, wow, that is just incredibly large trees right here. And uh, I thought I would share those with you because you don't see trees like that very often. They're just big stately looking things just out here in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing else like those too. Uh, at least not that I see. So anyway, on up the trail, getting plugged in and uh, food and water and supper and all that jazz. We'll talk to you soon. And something else that you just don't see very often out in the woods. We got a parcel of land that's for sale right over here. What's the number? 434-962-4951. If you're interested on some AT adjoining property, don't know how much it is or what they want for it, but it's right there. And it's, uh, of course, it's in the Shenandoah National Forest, so I don't know what difference that makes, if any. Probably some restrictions on that land, but be interesting. All right, on up the trail. Alrighty, this is the Calf Mountain Shelter, and this is what a full shelter area looks like. A full rocky shelter area. Wow, there's 10 tents here. There's supposed to be three tent pads here. And uh, I don't know where I'm gonna sleep. I'm talking about maybe moving the, uh, the table off the front of the shelter there, and we can maybe get into the overhang or cowboy camp, or who knows what's gonna happen, but wow, this is uh, what we were shooting for today, but not what we were expecting at all. But it'll all be good. Oh, Hawkeye's waving. Hey bud, we made it here. All right, we'll talk to you soon.